Hello and welcome to today's video on multiplayer and general blender add-ons. Uh, in the last few weeks slash months I've been very busy with so many different projects and schoolwork so I haven't really had a lot of time to sort of document my progress with my multiplayer add-on and in fact at one point I almost left it to the, left it to the uh, shadows to be honest. But I do recognise that it actually is quite useful for people who don't really want to learn networking and I really have to readdress user base. Um, so before I jump straight into that in-depth topic, I'm just going to show you a few things. Well, firstly, I have, um, if I just load, no, actually, I have uh, created another plugin, or rather created a new, not plugin, sorry, that's misleading. I've created an add-on or some modification to Blender which enables you to sort properties or order them. Uh, and uh, as you can see, you can move properties up or down depending on their order in the stack and so on. And there isn't really much functional use for this other than it's just it's useful. <laughs> and people have asked for it before, and I've thought about doing it before, but I never really looked into it. Now the trick is that um, properties are stored in a special uh, type Python or other BPy struct, which is part of BPy, which is a Blender module. And long story short. This structure they're stored in doesn't have uh, a, a sorting or order. It just it's a f whatever goes in first is the first item that it has in the list, and whatever goes in second is the second item in the list. And you can't move index indices around very easily. It's basically like a normal list. Um, so, in order to sort properties, you have to do some little trickery. Whenever you move a property up or down, you if you're moving it up, you delete the property above it and uh, and all properties below it, and then you recreate them in that order. So in this case, if I had if I wanted to move if I wanted to move terminal server upwards, you delete prop and delete prop zero. You then so this now terminal server would now become at position two. Then you'd recreate prop and prop zero in the same order. And so you, it gets the appearance that it's moved up and down the stack, which it really has. Uh, and that's how this works. Um, so this is a bit of an interesting work I'm doing for you, which you might be interested in. Uh, and second of all, check for updates. It does what it says in the tin. It checks for updates from blender.org. It's a bit hacky. It checks the HTML source code for um, a text string, which denotes the Blender version, using some just some basic um, text operations. Uh, and I can't think of a better way to do it yet, other than actually checking the binaries page, but I won't do that for now, uh, because, it, I mean, this is really not that big a deal. Uh, and if there is an update, you can click on the menu, and it'll go to Blender.org forward slash download. Uh, now, if you don't, if you move your mouse around, it you won't really see the menu. Uh, so you have to keep keep your mouse relatively still, and you'll see as soon as I move the mouse away, it it uh, registers it as a as a mouse move because there's about there's about a radius around this menu before boom it goes, which is quite useful. Um, and that's all I've been doing so far. Now the multiplayer add-on. Um, I've just in the last 10 minutes updated it to 1.6.3 rather than 1.6.2 because I noticed a few errors which were lingering which would have been very confusing so if you go to user preferences and game engine if you don't have this add-on already installed or if you do have it installed remove it and go to install add-on browse to the zip file and it's now contained in its own folder which means that you can remove all of the files with one button whereas before it didn't remove all of the files uh, because it was a bit of a rush to get it out uh, and <clears throat> what's really new okay well first things first if you add any properties plugins rather and you mouse over them in the uh, drop down menu you'll see it has position and then network object world position it reads the documentation strings from the plugins.py and displays them in the same menu so you can actually understand what each plugin does which is uh, handy, in my opinion. Um, and what is going to change in the new version? Well, firstly, I'm going to be removing raw data because in 9 times out of 10, it doesn't actually do anything useful and it just makes your game less um, suboptimal. Because of my understandings of the way in which numbers were stored in, in Python were incorrect at the time of writing the plugin. Um, it's not a, real big a, really big a really big deal, but it, it's frustrating. Um, so what else do I need to change? Well, um, you still cannot add a play game and host game on the same uh, object for the moment because it's just inefficient to do so. So I should check out the point. So the best thing to do is just to create a standalone server. If you're going to create a standalone server, it sometimes might be good to use the built-in Python script rather than running it from inside the game engine. 
More about that later. Um, for now, I'm going to assume that you want to run anything in Blender, which is fine. So, I'm going to create a new file. And to do this, I have to load factory settings, I think. I'm not sure I want to do that, but we'll see. Anyway, so I'm just going to do a bit of customization on my layout very quickly. So, I'm going to go to the game logic view. Uh, I've removed the outline because I rarely use the outline, actually. And I'm going to go to user preferences. I'm going to go to system, enable a VBOs. And what else do I normally have on OpenCL? Oh, CUDA. And then um, interface. I normally have these two selected. And um, what else do I normally have enabled? Uh, I use this occasionally. I use these keyboard shortcuts, but not always. No, I don't need any of these at the moment. Um, and add-ons quickly enable these. They're very useful. And I need the measure panel because that's actually quite useful. Don't know what this does. Um. Copy attributes menu is useful. Dynamic space bar menu can be useful sometimes. And material utilities I don't tend to use. Screencast I do occasionally use. That might be useful. <laughs> I love playing with add-ons. And quickly enable game engine runtime. I won't just hit enable my add-on as default because I don't like to use it as default. Factor tools is incredibly useful. Render. Rigify is actually incredibly useful as well. Rigify, Rigify, you are mesh, I think. Were you mesh? No. B surfaces is useful. Rigify, and that's it. Good. So if I save this as default, I'm now into a position where I can work with the add on. So I'm going to go to my user preferences and enable the add on if you haven't already. And you'll see I have this new add on panel down here which if you haven't seen before, you do now. Um, and basically, there are two ways, this add-on works in two stages. Um, this panel is actually separate to the game logic, and all the game logic runs um, outside of it. In other words, if you use the components build by Maguri, the uh, logic bricks would work without the uh, graphical user interface on the left. And likewise, you could, you could still program it without using this graf graphical user interface by using the properties that it creates. But for now, we won't worry about that. So, let's create a test environment for our client. So we need to add a plane, so it can walk around. Move it down on the z-axis till it's roughly not intersecting with the cube. Uh, we'll give it a material so it looks nicer. And we'll give the cube a material so it looks nicer, which it already does. And we'll give it a green colour, a toxic green. Set the sh enable shading. Set this, top, set this lamp to a spot lamp. Rotate it around a bit. Uh, I don't know what I've done with my um, user interface, it's a bit odd. Uh, there we go. I'm going to, to duplicate this lamp and have point that just about here. I'm going to set the energy colour to blue, because I like blue. Uh, about there. And you'll see now, have a, oh, I didn't, have I not enabled shading on this? I'm pretty sure I did. I've just washed it out, okay. Anyway, so that's all really going to do with this. There's not that much to worry about. Um, and then my lamp can have reduced energy as well. Uh, it's because I'm not in GLSL shading, I believe, which is always a downside. So if we go to GLSL, which is what I was hoping for in the first place, there we go. Uh, and that's fine for now. So we've got a little cube. Uh, now, what we're going to do, well this is this little guy can walk around, so we need to make him dynamic. So, set him to dynamic physics type. Uh, you can actually leave everything, perhaps give him collision bounds as a box, because that's just a good thing to do. Um, it works more efficiently in the game engine. We're going to delete the camera, because I'm not actually going to use the camera for it at the moment. Now, this is our player, our local player, and the, your local is anything referring to your only on your computer, and not, not on anyone else's. So this will only be seen locally on your computer, so we need to have an object that we'll, we will see as the other clients. The object that is seen remotely. And you have to think of every client as being a copy of the other. In other words, each client works the same as the other. So, 
we're going to make a, a copy, we're going to make an object that we will see as the other connected players, and likewise they will see as our connected player. So we can add, let's say, a cube, and this time we will give him the same material as the other cube, which I believe was green. But in this instance, we're going to du duplicate the material and give him a red colour. Uh, so he's the enemy, if I can actually get to the red. Okay, and we need to make, make let's name him enemy enemy and we'll give this guy a name uh, friendly because we can now we need to enable this to be a client so we click play game and you'll see some logic mix created and some properties are created um, now we're going to we want to be able to send first we want to be able to move them around and I've kindly uh, kept the movement plugin for, component rather from McGeary's test components and if we add this you'll soon see if I disable the play game logic just taking that to what it should do. That you can hopefully, if, if I've done it right, that should be dynamic, and that should be moving around. That's interesting. Let's just see. Okay, the admin hasn't correctly installed. Let me just do that. There we go. And now you can move him around. So that's okay. And that's how we want it to do. That's how we want it to work. Um, and yeah, that's fine. I was just checking that for some reason it had installed the text file, so I just pressed F8 to reload all the add-ons, and it included the text files automatically, which is what I've told it to do. Now, now that we've done this, we can move it around, and we want to be able to move it around so that other clients can see it. So we need to add a position plugin, and this will copy the position of this object to the local avatar, which is what we call it, the one we created on, on layer two. And the reason we've called this one enemy, not friendly, is because to other people, we will be the enemy. And likewise, um, they will be our enemy on our screen. So, we've got the position, and we need to tell it which object it's going to send this position to. So, we send it to the friendly, no, the enemy object. We leave raw data, and we leave optimize enabled. Optimize simply doesn't send new data if it doesn't need to be sent to reduce bandwidth. Now, we can look at... Also, if we just send the position, it won't know what which direction it's facing, so we can send the orientation as well. We'll do the same for orientation and change the object entity to enemy. We'll leave optimizing raw data enabled and the frequency, but we'll remove the X and Y rotations on the axis because we don't need to send any rotations around those axes because it's going to only turn in the Z axis. And that's great. And now, if we uh, minimize, if we try and save this as a test example, let's call this client.blend on the desktop. And then we create another instance of client.blend. Uh, I'd like to be symmetrical if I can. And then if we now create a server, which I can just basically go to client.blend, delete everything, and then go to the, the multiplayer panel, click host game, show the console. I've added a keyboard shortcut already. Oh, I did. Add a keyboard shortcut, right click toggle console, hit F4, and that's what I'm doing. And now I can simply start the server and the server is running. Okay, so client one, if they connect, and I really should actually just quickly show the console so I can determine if anything goes wrong. So I'm going to drag this across here, and this is how you should always test your games. Console, nine times out of ten, if anything goes wrong, your console will tell you why. Uh, and if you don't understand it, you can simply take a print screen and upload it to Blender Artists, where I can have a look. Um, so this is the two clients, and this is the server. So we can now connect, and move him around. Connect, and move this one around. Now, interestingly, the logic isn't correctly functioning, so we need to check why that is. And the reason being is that, for some reason, we don't have... Well, there are two reasons. Firstly, we don't seem to have any multiplayer log uh, user add-ons because it's not does it enabled by default. And you'll notice that there is no play game enabled. So we need to do that. Pick play game. i will give ourselves a name of uh, C1 for client one. This should be different per game. Um, I can add. You can use some Python to, ver to modify that name each time. Uh, and then we go to. We'll have to save this in fact and go open it in here. Check we've got the logic panel, we do. Uh, that's correct. Now, if we connect one, we see you connect to the server. And he can move around, or she. Create another one, and you'll see that both 
have the um, client, which is great. And at the moment, it's a little bit jerky on the right hand side because of the, the low latency updates. So we should fix that. Let's disconnect, and you'll see in a minute he will disconnect from this client as well, hopefully, if I've done anything right. Uh, the problem is I've left it with a 10 second timeout, so it takes about 10 seconds from the timeout. So whilst we're doing that, you'll see it's gone. And we'll go to layer 2, and on the enemy object, we'll add interpolate orientation and interpolate position. Now, if we save this as, a, as the default blend, open in both instances, and just change the timeout quickly on the server to 2 seconds, or... Yeah. And now run it, and we see we have one here, and the other one here. Now, when we draw drive around, it's a little bit jerky, but it's uh, extrapolating. And in fact, interesting enough, to make it look nicer, if we change the update frequency to 15, not 125, and save that as default, and open it in the other client, and run the both, oh, spawn point error, you'll see that once it gets going, it's a lot smoother. So it's about finding a balance. So, that's the basics of the add-on. Now, why would we want to change the update rate? Well, apart from the, the extrapolation, the lower the update rate, the less data is sent, and the less um, bogged down the server will get with more clients. So, that's fine, that's how we send positions and orientations, but what if we want to do something more complex? Well, in that instance, we start to use properties. So properties are very useful things indeed. So, random spawn simply spawns this client on a random point on a, on a grid using the vertices, which is handy. Um, so don't worry about that for now. We can send the, vis the visibility of the object as well, but we might want to send other things like properties, because with properties you can do nearly anything. In fact, you wouldn't... the only thing... Yes, in fact, with properties you could, you could um, do every single one of these components uh, on their own. So that's why they're useful, but obviously they're a bit cumbersome to use in that context, so we'll use um, properties uh, for other purposes. So in this case, let's say we want to have some animation, because animations are great. <laughs> but we don't have them locally, perhaps, because they get in the way, so we'll add them on the other clients. So let's have... Um, uh, what could we have? What could we have? Let's add some... Potentially we could add some arms. So, cube, and we'll go to Z. Uh, into edit, not a Z. We go into wireframe. This is my arm here. Scale it on the y axis, x axis up, and I'm going to just set the local center to this point here. Grab it along the x axis and duplicate it along the x axis. So we've got two arms. And then we'll have to quickly. Oh no, don't you duplicate. Set the center to the middle, and now they both stem from here. Grab them down the z-axis. I could use a mirror modifier for this, but I prefer just to do it manually because it's such a quick thing to do. Grab the arms down the z-axis, and now we have some arms of sorts. Mm -hmm. Now, when they, they can rotate along the x-axis like this, and they move. So we grab them down a bit. So when they rotate around the x-axis, they are... And now we can simply make them a bit longer, so they look proportionally more like arms rather than just stubs. And that's how we have some arms. Now they can rotate along... i make it a zombie, because that'd be fun. So... We need to have a keyframe. So let's have a keyframe here. No, not a DME, not a location. Uh, I... rotation. Now, let's use, um, go ahead, 60 frames, or 15 frames. 20 frames is a good one, actually. Insert rotation there. And you'll see it has that. Now, if we add a uh, play animation on here, so an action, Make sure, I don't know if I've got if which version of Blender I've got, so I'll just double check this is actually saved in the dope sheet, or action editor rather, as a fake user, just in case it deletes it. 
and we're going to play cube action. This ends on frame 20, and we'll set the speed if we can. I can't remember. No, we can't on the, on the actuator. And we'll make it um, ping pong, I think. Uh, I don't really use the action. I don't actually. I don't think I ever use the animations in the game engine yet because most of my stuff is doing is Pythonic. So um, now, if we access this object, it'll copy all the properties to the, the friendly or enemy object in this case. So we need to add a property sensor on the enemy in order to determine what it's doing. So firstly, let's add a property that we're going to send over to this object. So the, uh, it's going to receive a property called uh, uh, walking non-capitals. For the benefit, we'll just choose walking as any key being pressed. We get a boolean, and set to default false by default. Now we add a property sensor. Um, interval. In fact, no. Um, we'll set it to equal and true false. If walking is equal to true, we can then play the animation. So see, by default, this doesn't actually do anything. But if I enable it, it does this. Which is great. Now, let's go to pair one. We need to add a plugin that will send these properties. So, we can add a property plugin. And if we check, click on it, you'll see that we have all or, or, or single. Now, we can't actually send more than one uh, pl plot property unless we just send all. Um, so, in this case, we'll leave it, we'll turn it for all because we're not going to send all, we're just going to send one. It's more just more efficient if we have more later on. We're going to call this walking. Now we're going to have to add ourselves a property called walking. Don't worry about the properties before. These properties that are plugins will not be sent uh, by default. Walking is a boolean and all we'll do is we'll make a keyboard sensor, all keys, uh, and this will go to um, where is it? This will go to make two controllers, an AND and a an NAND. And we'll make two property actuators. The first property actuator will set walking to true. And the second will set walking to false. So when we don't press a key, it sets the walking to false. Now let's debug walking to check that it's doing what we want it to do. So we've got the server running as we wanted it earlier. We're into shader mode. And we'll just click through show debug properties. You see now, whenever I hold any keys, it sets walking to true. Okay, so now that's fine. And if we open it in this, hopefully this all works correctly. We'll create the object that can walk around, and it's not spawning the arms armatures. So I've got to determine why this is doing this because that would be a very odd um, thing to have ha happen. And I have a feeling it's to do with the pro. I haven't really maintained the single attribute of the properties plugin. So three eight three. Um, and this is the receiver that's, that's not working. Object does not support item assignment, which means that the entity object isn't the entity object isn't receiving anything. So let's check. I've got any random logic that shouldn't be there on these. And this doesn't, and this does have walking, which is fine. The interesting thing might be that I've actually haven't yes, so on properties we need to rename this to enemy. And we make this going hopefully this work now. I might still not work. Right. So friendly walking is is correctly working. But the enemy walking isn't, so we need to determine why that is. because uh, a lot of this game is just determining what what's happening and why it's not. So just to check that it isn't just the, the property itself that's not working, if we just click all and then open this. I don't actually know if network properties show in debugs very well. So let me just quickly test why it's not sending. If I go to the text editor and I go into plugins.py, this is what you guys can do at home if, if you're not if you can't see why something's not working. Um, and I find the properties plugin and we'll see if it's actually receiving the data that it should be. So, let's quickly have a look. Um, for print raw data, check this actually when it's sending correctly. 
and that'll be a huge list of random stuff. So that's correct, that, that's certainly what we wanted to do. Now, uh, we need to print what's being received. So we need to print plugin data. And we maximize this and get that guy connected. So that actually is being received. And that's what we wanted to do. So it might be that the debug properties aren't, because their instances aren't showing what we want them to show, and I think that's probably the case. In fact, that's definitely the case. So now we can remove this debug statement, because we're not debugging anymore. And all we need to do now is parent this armature. Oh no, parent this armature to this object here. So that it becomes added when the game is run. So quickly just check why I'm getting a squished cube. I'm not sure why that was. And then we need to open this one. And you'll see that we are getting walking, but we're getting some conflicting positions. I should be using random spawn, really. And you'll now see that as this guy on the, on the right is walking around, he's doing this. Now we are getting some jitter, and I'm not sure why that is. So to make sure that we're not getting any problems, I'll just disable the, um, let's the update rate to 30. Quickly and just see if that fixes anything. Yeah, so the extrapolation needs some work. But if we just disable that for now, uh, disable those properties, set the full screen. Now, we can test this out with the non jittery weird thing. And that's all that we need to do. And that is how you get animations working. That was a question people asked me before. Now, the, you can get some issues when you're trying to send, if you try and network objects that are parented to each other. What you'll get is, if you parented, let's say, the turret of a tank, which had one rotation plugin, to the other tank, to the, ba the body of the tank, which also had a rotation plugin, if you started sending both rotations, you'd get a horrible relationship forming. The best thing to do in that case is to make sure that the um, the t either the turret and the tank in the that are the dummies or the the avatars are not parented to each other, um, and they'll be separate objects, which is probably the best thing to do. Um, or just use the main rotation and position plugins for the tank, and then for the turret, you just use a property that sends the rotation and then use some Python. Um, and that's basically it. So that's all that I've got done for you to get guys today. If you do have any more questions, please. Uh, leave me a message. Um, now, very quickly, it's important that you know I've just changed the plugin today. It'll be 1.2.6. No, 1.6.3 or 1.6.4, depending on what I choose. Uh, I've got to update just a few things in it, uh, and then you're done for the day. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Please download and, and give it a try.